Yesterday was International Holocaust Remembrance Day. January 27th was chosen by the United Nations in 2005, by the way, because it was on this day that Auschwitz-Birkenau was liberated. On January 27th, 1945, the international community brought the horrors of the Holocaust to an end. That, of course, is not entirely true. It took nearly three more months, grueling and deadly months, before all the camps were liberated. It was not until May 8, 1945, when Nazi Germany was defeated, and in fact, not until the following day, the last of these camps was liberated. And yet Auschwitz-Birkenau represents the massiveness of the destruction of European Jewry and the evil of the Nazis. It was there that just over one million Jews were murdered. Still, I think January 27th was chosen because it represents the day the world defeated the Nazi death machine. Likewise, Israel's Knesset chose the 27th of Nisan because it is the anniversary of the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. It is the day when Jews rose up against their Nazi oppressors. The small ragtag group of Jewish fighters held off the Nazi army longer than the Polish army was able to. It was a remarkable feat and one that continues to inspire Israel's sense that it and it alone can protect Jewish lives. And that no matter how small we may even appear when standing before armies with far lar larger numbers than ours, we will in the end triumph. The Knesset debated other dates. Some thought Tisha B'Av, the ninth of Av, would be better when every tragedy seemed to happen to the Jewish people. But ultimately, it was the 27th of Nisan was chosen and put forth in 1959. It is that day when we as a synagogue community remember the Holocaust, the Shoah. We need such days to remember the uniqueness of the Holocaust. They remind us that the Shoah was singular in its evil. In an age when people conjure up Holocaust comparisons to such things as mask or vaccine mandates, we really need such days. And yet no perfect day can encapsulate the evils and horrors of the Holocaust. And I've been re reflecting on these days when the Jewish community and the international community focus on Holocaust remembrance and education. It seems to me that there is a danger that both of these days might actually commemorate the wrong things. Let me explain. While well, January 27th does acknowledge the liberation of Auschwitz-Birkenau, it begs the question of how was this allowed to go on for so long? Despite the denials in the face of overwhelming evidence, 1945 is years after the world knew what was happening. Perhaps the day should have been November 9th. That would have been a better day to commemorate the Holocaust. On this date in 1938, the world saw Kristallnacht, Photographs of burning synagogues appeared in newspapers. It should have been clear what the Nazis intended on November 9, 1938. I recognize that hindsight is crystal clear, but aren't commemoration days exactly that? They should say that on that day we really should have known. We prefer instead to seize on a semblance of victory rather than missed opportunities. Another date that occurs to me is January 20th. It was on this day in 1942 that Nazi leaders attended a small get-together in Wannsee, Germany. And while the world only found out about this event years later, after this, this occasion represents more than anything else the evil designs of Nazism. It was there in Vansi that Nazi leaders gathered at a beautiful villa. They ate their meal, meals on beautiful crystal in China, dined on delicious food, drank amazing wines, 
all while discussing the final solution and the creation of the very camps that yesterday commemorated liberating. I still find this conference difficult to even imagine. People discuss the murder of millions of human beings as if it was only about how fast they can build factories and how efficiently they could transport goods and supplies over vast distances. Remember January 20th. Recall how callous and indifferent people can be as they chit-chat and dine on fine china. And yet, if international leaders would have consulted me, as I wish they would, I would have set, said the date really should be June 6th. This is the day that the SS St. Louis was turned back to Europe. The St. Louis was a ship that sailed from Germany in May 1939 with some 900 Jewish refugees. It sailed to Havana, but Cuba denied entry. And despite Jewish leaders advocating for their admission, the United States also denied the refugees entry. And so on June 6, the ship was turned back to Europe. Great Britain admitted some 300 of those Jewish immigrants. Almost all of those survived the war. Of the remaining 600, approximately 350 survived the war, found other ways to flee Europe. And approximately 250 were murdered in the Holocaust. But this date is not about those 250 Jews, and I recall it not as a condemnation of our own country, but instead to highlight the world's indifference. Newspapers covered the story of the SS St. Louis and shared details about the journey, but the world did not care. And Nazi leaders took note of this indifference. And the reason that the Holocaust happened was not so much about what a few Nazi leaders did at a villa in the German countryside or what they perpetrated at those camps, but about what the world did not do when it could have done so much more. Evil achieves its nefarious ends when good people turn away and say things like, I'm too busy, or why should I help them? Or even more likely, I can't help everyone. Remember June 6. Hold it up as a reminder that we can always do more and that we should, should always do more. Of course it is more comfortable marking the Holocaust on the 27th of Nisan and January 27th. We triumphed. We were victorious. That is not the most important message the Holocaust calls us to remember. It is instead that far too frequently we choose to remain silent. Most people were not members of the SS. They were not those who carried out the evil deeds at Auschwitz-Birkenau. Most people were not as well soldiers who, did, who fought and died to defeat the Nazis. Most people, especially those in the United States, just read their morning paper and carried on with their every day. Perhaps they worried about soldiers they knew or family members still trapped in Europe. But on most days, the fate of the Jews was a distant problem. The horrors that other people experienced was too far away and too far removed to occupy most people's attention. June 6 is when the world effectively said, we don't care. Perhaps I admit it would be too painful a day to remember the Holocaust, but it most certainly would be a day that reminds us to take never again truly to heart.